PCW UK is a wrestling promotion based in Preston, mostly uh, England. It uh, brings people together, it's entertainment, it touches people's lives. Yeah, you see a lot of different people. It's fantastic. What it's done for my child is amazing. This is different. It was really funny. He, he had the biggest, blondest curls you've ever seen in your life. Honestly, when I used to walk around with him, I used to have jeans on or dungarees, and I really got to the stage where everyone said, what a gorgeous little girl. I had a badge saying, it's a boy. As a kid, um, I was a bit, you know, I was a bit shy, uh, you know, the shy little kid. I uh, used to love wrestling, you know, that was back then. Uh, all the kids used to like wrestling. It was something you'd talk about in the playground at school, you know. I think it was about 10 or 12, and uh, I'd go in his bedroom, and he was a big Man United fan as well. So all the bedding were Man United. Apart from the walls, where you expect to see posters of, like, Katie Price, whoever was the page free girl at the time. Instead, we got men in spandex. <laughs> so I used to go to different shows in the UK. You know, and I got to know all the all the UK scene, got really into the wrestling. You know, at the time I was running bars, uh, and I thought I could easily run events. <laughs> nothing in Liverpool, nothing in Manchester, nothing in Preston. If you wanted to find more wrestling, you'd have to go like Sheffield or somewhere like that. Crazy man. The first show I run, that that I think the draw was something like 40 people. I knew that I needed something more. Uh, I knew that the first ones I need more attractions. August 2011 was like the rebrand to PCW. I put Colt Cabana on the first show, and him advertising it on his podcast actually sold me loads of tickets. That got like 250, 300 people. Um, there, there are times when we're probably one of the hottest, like, if not the hottest company in the UK for quite a period, you know, and the show's just built and built and built. <laughs> So, how did you meet your ex-wife? Uh, I used to work on Virgin Trains. Um, you know, and friends from Virgin Trains then took me on the night out. We kind of snuck off together on the night out and then hit it off. Uh, and then that was it. It was just kind of like a, a whirlwind after that. Just everything was crazy and just... At first, um, yeah, been badly in love, romantic, um, lovely couple. It took us a good few years to get married. You know, I always just said that it's an expensive day out, <laughs> which it was, you know, but it was it was good. It was, you know, we had some great years. We got together 11 years, and I'd say 10 of them were good. You know, there's not no arguments, no nothing. Um, everything, everything were good at the beginning. Um, to be honest, I, I just hit a really bad point where I just uh, started becoming, like, suffering from depression. I didn't know, though. I didn't know the signs. I wasn't sure. Um, I, in my day job, I was, worked in a shopping centre of security. I was doing, you know, three days a week in the end because wrestling was doing good. I had someone die on me in the centre, and then it was horrible. And the management of the centre was giving us grief, saying you, did, you know, did CPR wrong and this, and it, it just it bothered me a lot. Uh, that same week, I had a friend die in a motorcycle accident. And it was the anniversary of two other deaths that, that touched my life. Uh, and then also, the year before, the same week uh, was the de death of another friend in wrestling, Chris Travis, who everyone known as Mr. PCW. You know, he was a brilliant guy. 
and it was just everything that week. It was there's like a week now. It's it's the end of March, so like the beginning of April, and it's like four deaths in a week. You know that just and it was it just took its toll, and I started just distancing myself from my wife. You know, I started then living on a a sofa. I wouldn't sleep in the same bed. I was just living on this sofa. I then started down the dark path where I was just going out drinking, and then drink weren't enough, so I'm doing other things. You know. And, going down a really dark path of just addiction. Before you know it, I looked and I'm like, I'm 28,000 pounds in debt. I've locked, my marriage has broken down. I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. And I'd just given up. Uh, I got to the stage where I'm just letting myself back in the old house. I'm just lying on the floor in the living room, just, just giving up, I'm just doing my door shift, going back after a few drinks, just lying down, just absolutely lost in my life. And it was only when I started, like, uh, another friend helped me, saying, oh yeah, well, there's a flat in the, you know, there's another flat, and they got me this flat, and then kind of, you know, I got another girlfriend, and everything, and a few positive changes happened, and I started fighting back. I, I, I'd almost got myself back on my feet, back to normal. Duncan, who basically, he's one of like, the owners of ICW, called me. You know, we've got some bad news, Adrian's took his own life. So Lionheart was this outspoken guy, uh, but I clicked with him straight away. You know, we've been through so much. When he broke his neck, I was at his bedside in hospital. You know, he then he was then out for months and was email each other every day. And, you know, I then brought him in for a non-wrestling role just to give him a wage, give him something to do. And he was like the general manager of PCW. You know, and it, it, was, it was also this conscience in my head, because I could be a, a immature and a dick on social media and they'd be messaging me straight away, calm down, delete that, do that. He was like my conscience as such, you know, and he always looked out for me. I didn't see it coming one bit, not even slightly, you know, and it, it destroyed me because I was just, it was shock, like the shock hit me, confusion, everything. Yeah, it was bad. And I couldn't handle it, I just got like a bottle and I just drank, like in the bar, like the bar closed. I'm sat in the darkness, just sat there, just crying, just drinking. Me and Stephen have always been really close. We've not got much family, so I really hope that it gets better. I've not seen him smile for a long time. I don't think he could take another death or another tragedy. That's my opinion. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>